Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and this is the big announcement video we've all been waiting for, and I'm going to start off with one thing that kind of has a little bit of a rabbit hole behind it. I'm not going to focus on it because it could be its own video, I just want to tell you guys what's going on because from what I've talked to people, nobody knows this is going on, and you guys need to know about this. Apparently wizards think store owners are stupid and can't put two and two together, but anyway, uh, first up yesterday they said Innistrad Midnight Hunt product delays affecting Asia Pacific locations, so um, the pre-release is supposed to be September 17th. And it will go on as scheduled in Australia and New Zealand, although, yeah, right, they're all locked down, so they won't. But pretending that's not the case and that it's not run by an authoritarian lunatic government, remember that next time you guys go and vote, by the way, uh, they will not have any draft boosters at all available for the pre-release weekend, but the pre-release packs and, shockingly enough, set boosters will be available. Now remember, Crimson Vow, they're pushing set boosters because they added a uh, box topper to, theoretically, just that box, not the regular draft booster box. Thus, in theory, with about a, you know, an average $20, $30 historic uh, value of the box topper, that should bring it up to a better value than the regular boxes. They're trying to condition people to buy uh, the set boosters because I guess they're more profitable. I mean, they're really close in price. I don't really get the end game here, but I don't know. Maybe they're preparing to eliminate draft boosters. I have no idea. In my opinion, it's a better product. I don't have a problem with that. It's just, why is Wizards being so weird and shady about this? So just to, to finish this article, okay, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, your pre-release got kicked out a week to September 24th because the pre-release kits won't show up on time. So neither one of those very, you know, crushing. It's not like you're going to have to wait a month or something. But let's go back to what's going on with set boosters. Okay, we already know about Crimson Vow. Now, I've got some, some inside contacts here at various stores, distributors, you know, that kind of stuff. And the, the word is, they're, they're going, hey, uh, there, there's another shipping delay. Ah, COVID. Ah. But we can send you like 100 boxes of set boosters and like 10 boxes of draft boosters. I've got an idea. If you can prioritize, like you're going to short it, it didn't get done in time, there's only so many semis, whatever the hell the problem allegedly is, you can tell the printing company, you can tell the shipping companies, prioritize the draft boosters. But you told them to prioritize the set boosters. Okay, that wasn't an accident five times in a row this year. Then on top of it, you know how um, if you apply for WPN Premium, which means it's it's really a two-tiered system. You got your, your low tier, and then you're like ultra premium, great, amazing superstore. But to get to that status, you need a certain amount of like customers and sales and that kind of stuff. But then they request your entire sales data, like down to the last product. They're asking like exact numbers, inventory, like all this really invasive stuff. It's really weird. But, you know, okay, whatever. So now stores that weren't eligible and never applied are getting requests just in the last couple weeks to show their sales data to wizards. What the hell is it any of their business? It's bad enough that you have to do it to apply for premium. Then I'm hearing from some like insider leaks that they're trying to manipulate the, the numbers to say, oh, look how successful the set boosters are. Yes, our sales numbers for set boosters will be higher if that's all you send us. And then people walk in the door in our shop and we say, we don't have the draft ones, but here buy these. Which, like I said, is just trying to condition people to buy them instead. It's the, uh, what is that, the foot in the door thing? We're like, oh, well, you've already bought it once. Ooh, I kind of like this. So there's some seriously shady stuff going on. So this is like, what, the fourth or fifth time that a certain zone, they're like, oh, well, we're definitely sending you the set boosters, but the regular ones that people actually want that are cheaper, they're not going to show up on time. I sort of see a pattern here, and why the hell are they suddenly requesting sales data from stores? They know exactly how much they ordered from the distributor level. They could just ask the distributor. Why are they asking the stores? And the theory is it's to um, create some kind of like fake statistics or something. I don't know. We all know they like to be as misleading as possible in their uh, investor reports quarterly. And there's one of those coming up. So I don't know. I, I don't know what's behind this. It's just all we know between me and all these big, big, big store owners and these groups of store owners online and private groups is that something really weird is going on. So I just wanted to throw that out there before we get into the new products. So next up, the uh, super drop that leaked from, I'm being told, China, not Japan. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, we got some info on that. Mostly just, you know, pricing, and then I'm going to run down the values in a separate video, like I said I would. But if you didn't see the uh, reveal of what cards are in there and what the art looks like, uh, pretty much everything but the name is in that video. So go check that out. I uploaded it late last night. Uh, but there will be a video either later today or tomorrow covering, like, the actual value and investment potential. Uh, we do know that it was called uh, Secret Layers Out of Time. So I just wanted to address that. Uh, I have an unfortunate announcement the debut moment for full previews, so whatever that means, I mean, I, I, I think it's exactly the opposite of what they just said. It's going to be the start of the previews, not the end of the spoilers. Uh, for Midnight Hunt are going to be coming September 2nd, not today, August 24th, like everybody thought. So, 
Oh, well, there's so much news, I don't think people wanted to take in, like, 50 new cards from a new set coming out, you know, next month either. Now, there are some card spoilers in this video for some products that you've never heard of, though, so that's pretty spicy. But, uh, well, speaking of that, let's just jump into a, a brand new product that nobody saw coming. So we've got, check this out, Pioneer Challenge decks coming out in 2021, in fact, October 15th. So just to keep things straight, okay, people are like, modern is is modern, we're all sick of the same, artifact, affinity, and infect, and just you know, all that old stuff. Let's just get rid of that. Let's just play with something a little bit, a little bit more up to date, you know? I'd say a little bit lower powered, but look at standard for the last two years. So if I remember correctly, the community created Frontier, which is just another non-rotating, basically modern, but with a different starting point. The starting point they chose was a disaster. I think it included fetch lands, and then I think they, like, reverse course and banned them or something. But yeah, Frontier's dead. The Wizards created Pioneer, which is just, like, Frontier with a different starting point, basically. Maybe this was the one where they banned fetch lands. I don't remember. I didn't have a lot of interest because uh, what some people were asking for and what they actually wanted and would enjoy were two different things. What people, like, really wanted from what they were asking for, what they were describing, is a new, longer-term rotating format. And what we got was Frontier, Pioneer, and Historic, three non-rotating formats. It's just modern without all the old modern stuff, which, you know, okay, it's not terrible, but none of them really took off. So to see a, a Pioneer product come out, that's kind of shocking. Now, they did call these Challenger decks, but to keep it straight, they wrote the word Pioneer right on the side as big as possible. So shout out to whoever decided on that, because there would have been some confusion, because when people think Challenger deck, they think Standard Legal. And a lot of these cards were very recently Standard Legal. So um, Wizard says these are 60 plus 15, so 75 total, you know, with the sideboard decks, and they're meant to be just played as is. Uh, and be competitive at the local level, whatever that means. So basically not like giant, you know, Grand Prix tournament, but those don't exist anymore. And uh, looking at them, I mean, yeah, there's like Stone Coil Serpent, there's like Bomat in it. Like, I'm not going to go over the full deck list, go look at them if you want. Um, if you guys really want to do a breakdown of the value, though, but I don't like it when people buy pre-made decks and split them apart for the value because they're worth double. I mean, yeah, free money, cool. But, like, what if somebody wanted the deck? Which, it's Pioneer. Nobody wants the decks. But I always hated it when people do that with, like, commander decks and stuff. They're, they just buy it to split it apart. Well, what if somebody wanted to play with the commander deck and you're just like, let's send more singles into the marketplace? It's just weird. Like, if you want to open cards, open packs. You know, randomized ones. Not just, oh, look at this perfect thing that they put together. First thing I'm going to do is rip it apart. I don't know. Anybody else find that weird? But, uh... Yeah, I mean, these are pretty good. We've got uh, Lotus Field Combo, Mono Red Burn, if you want to be that asshole in your playgroup, Azoria Spirits, because if they made a blue-white hyper-control deck, they would just be revealing how awful blue-white actually is and the fact that they never do anything about it. And then we've got Orzov Auras with SRAM on it for some reason, even though it has nothing to do with Auras and exclusively does stuff with, uh, what was it, equipment and vehicles. So this exists. Of course, they don't have a price because, remember, MSRPs are just a myth. My guess is they'll be the same price as Challenger decks, but I don't know. I mean, it, it is a a longer format with more expensive cards in it, so I don't know. It could be higher. Actually, maybe I shouldn't make the value video if I don't know what the product costs. So next up, we've got Commander Collection Black, which uh, I think did we, we saw something green. I, I think it was Commander Collection Green. Wasn't that a thing? So it's about time we saw, you know, one of the other colors, like, geez. It's been a hot minute. So they say Commander Collection Black is a box set of, oh yeah, eight reprinted cards. Okay, yeah, this is the same thing as, as the green one. Uh, they're themed to one color and what it does best. So remember Signature Spellbooks? This is like literally those. Like, come on. But they're not focused on a character. They're focused on a color, which to me makes more sense anyway. So, okay, by the way, the green one was, was like pretty cool. Like, I don't know if people got too nuts about it, but the, the cards included in the art, like, amazing. So they go on to say, um, uh, black is the color of ruthlessness and opportunity. Uh, these cards have been selected to showcase iconic black strategies in Commander, which that's huge. I love that. Uh, and by the way, we know the eight cards. I'm going to get to it after I read this. Uh, and each one has been given brand new art with loads of references to popular legendary characters. Uh, they'll be right at home in your favorite black deck alongside their legendary counterparts. Now this time, just like the last time, there's two versions, a regular one and a premium one, aka foil. Can they just use the terms we all use? So all WPN stores, so hopefully your local store is in the WPN program at all, will be able to order the regular version, which contains all eight cards in non-foil. Uh, the premium edition will be exclusive to WPN premium stores. Hey, there's that word that has multiple definitions that totally isn't confusing. And it will contain, quote, traditional foil. That's what the rest of the community refers to as curly boys or shit Pringles, the curved menace. 
the automatic tradeaways. I've heard all kinds of nicknames. So, I mean, you know, set logo looks cool. Front packaging looks cool. They got the circle on there. Last time it looked like a lime. In fact, it literally just looked like the lime wire logo. Shout out to my chemical romance full album.exe. So the cards included are going to be Ghoul Collar Gisa. There you go. Pretty famous card there, of course. She's uh, taking the head off a zombie with a stick or her arm. I'm, I'm not sure. That's a weird form, actually. Mostly known for her necromantic arts, not her martial arts. Then we got Ophiomancer. I'm not sure I've ever actually heard of that, but it's obviously snake mancer uh then we got phyrexian arena um i'm not gonna go over values uh, until it's like closer to release but that's some money and i think these were like 20 or 30 bucks when they came out i thought so like the, the phyrexian arena is a lot of money i'm just saying then we got reanimate because you know duh it's it's black like of course they're gonna have that in there then they got toxic deluge uh last i checked that's a little bit of cash too uh then we got soul ring because you know of course and let me just say a soul ring that like matches the black theme of a black deck Oh my gosh. It's been printed to death. It's still kind of valuable, but I bet you that one's going to be worth a little more than average because that, that art is amazing. Then we've got a creepy looking command tower. So uh, those are pretty much the two automatic includes. They were probably in the last green one too, if I think hard enough. Uh, then we got the uh, double-sided Liliana uh, heretical healer and then the Liliana defiant necromancer. I don't think that one's worth that much. We all know the Jace one, the baby Jace from that set, that thing hit insane levels not actually worth that much today believe it or not but uh i don't think this one was too huge but she's still really powerful this is from uh, origins by the way and then we've got a zombie token with uh mr snack on the other side so slippery snick a snack he's so sneaky he has two sides hooray for meme snakes so we actually don't have a release date on this it just says in your local store soon so probably sooner than the October 15th release of the Pioneer deck. So um, as soon as I get word on this coming out, I'm going to do like a value video on it. But oh my gosh, it looks like a good value if it's the same price as the green one, which I can't imagine they would have the balls to change the price just because they put more valuable cards in it. But then against Wizards. By the way, one more thing I want to throw in here. A huge news coming out today was uh, nobody could log into Arena, even as late as like 2.30. And the Magic Arena account said, oh yeah, uh, we got to extend uh, maintenance three hours. And then, like, every reply was like, it'll be a miracle if we could even log in after that, or if Arena works at a basic level after you just gutted all the background code and changed everything in the databases, so... Yikes! And then, I'm, I'm sure it's a coincidence, and this was pre-scheduled, they also announced that there's going to be a huge renewal egg uh, if you log in any time before rotation, which, you know, big surprise, they've done that in the past. But they, I'm sure they didn't just release it today because everyone was pissed about the extended, uh, you know, stuff where they couldn't log in, couldn't get their dailies, and people in Asia were like, it, it's like almost midnight, how am I going to get my daily? Like, come on. Also, they announced, oh, shocker, the historic Brawl Q, the 99 plus one format, which is literally just Commander. Um, it's here to stay permanently. Oh, who didn't see that coming? But yeah, if you couldn't log in today, it's because they extended the uh, maintenance by three hours. So I heard it's back up now, but well, I'm here recording this. So next up, they wanted to address another big controversy. It's the universes beyond, or as some people call it, oh, I love that fandom or get your stupid fandom I don't care about out of my magic. Very polarizing, but what everyone took issue with, and they, they kind of hint at this, but don't really... Okay, you'll see. Basically, they made the Walking Dead secret lair. They were brand new cards I've never been seen before, and people were like, I don't want characters from the Walking Dead in my commander set. In fact, the Walking Dead is pretty unpopular these days. So for them to be like, this is, you know, one time you buy them here, that's it. That's the only time we're ever running them off, and if you need them, buy them now. That's, that's so ridiculous for various reasons but a lot of people just stylistically were like okay i've got like zombies and i've got goblins and then i've got lucille like what what i don't want that in my deck but even more people were just like stop selling brand new individual cards in a secret lair drop that's only on sale for like two freaking days you jackasses and so what they did about it i am not kidding was say oh okay we'll just put like a six month exclusivity on it or 12 months or whatever the hell it was i don't know it was some absurd long amount of time and then we'll make an actual in-universe magic version and throw it into the list so it'll show up on, uh, oh, what is that, collector's boosters and set boosters? Or is it just set boosters? I forget. But basically, it'll come out like as a small portion of a magic product that's a standard release in the future, but like months in the future. So if you don't want Walking Dead characters in your commander deck, well, then just wait long enough and you'll get the real one, but then everybody else in the meantime can play with it. It's, it wasn't a solution, let's just put it that way. It was basically Wizard saying, well, we're going to continue to do it because it's extremely greedy, manipulative, and forcing people to buy it, but we're going to do the bare minimum to pretend like we made this fair. I mean, that's pretty much how everybody saw it, and that's what it is 
So as they put it, earlier this year we looked at the future of Universes Beyond and discussed in part the legality of cards that are part of the Universes Beyond releases, and as today, a part of today's announcements, we shared more details on partnerships with some exciting worlds, including, well, the big one. Uh, this is going to be a 2023 set. Oh, yes. Uh, they call it a full, a full set and an expansion, so like, okay, standard legal, right? Well, spoiler alert, wrong. And it's going to be called The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth. So I could read the whole article, but it's so much marketing fluff and hype. And it's like, okay, it's Lord of the Rings. I'm already into it. Just, okay, you don't need to market to me or most people. But get this. Okay, the last thing they say in the article is, like all universes beyond product, which should have an S on it, but they never, you know, proofread these, the set will not be legal in standard. Okay, d did they forget about the D&D &D set from universes beyond that just came out and was standard legal? <laughs> Now, this wasn't a surprise to me, although it was a surprise that this isn't standard legal because, let me just cut the shit, I think it was standard legal and then they changed their minds, okay? Let me tell you why I think that. This is a, quote, full set, a, quote, full expansion, okay? In addition, there's going to be four commander decks. In addition, there's going to be secret layers. I think that this was a standard in-universe set. It was literally going to be standard legal, and then they change their minds because there was a lot of backlash of like i don't want this in my official magic canon keep it to wacky you know side stuff because they've done unsets although they've done like a conspiracy and battle bond and those actually were in the universe and some of the characters showed up to strixhaven you know so like i 100 percent get how people want separation okay i hated walking dead i love lord of the rings i love D D. But if they were to just stop pretending that it's, like, in-universe and that, like, D&D &D characters are planeswalkers, yeah, I, I really think they should do that. It just feels so mixed up and, like, they're disrespecting 26 years of official canon. It, it really, really, really does. So, like I said, in my opinion, this was a standard legal product, and then they just now are saying it isn't, and they're going to release it anyway. That's what I'm saying. Here is what they're saying. <laughs> Like all universes beyond products, except d, d this set will not be legal and standard, but modern and historic uh, legality provides the greatest opportunity for the most people to experience this beloved world while still holding standard as its own space. Uh, while the set isn't focused on modern, hmm, like a modern Horizon set might be, hmm, we wanted to give as many players the opportunity to play with these cards and enjoy them, I, I guess they meant as possible. Did anybody read this paragraph? Holy shit. These literally aren't even sentences. Like, my God. There's like three typos in three lines. So, okay, get this. This is what else they said. So, in Tales of Middle Earth, uh, you'll meet Magic's take on Gandalf, Frodo, Aragorn, the One Ring, and so much more. We've taken great care to make the experience seamless between the Middle Earth loved by many and the Magic aesthetic dear to fans. Uh, people kind of want them separate, but okay. I mean... They did a really bad job of wrapping in D&D &D into magic with like these weird, like what they call the ability names and having like you come across some homeless person who stabs you in the chest or whatever, and then making that the spell name. Like what even was any of that? People hated that. So they're like, oh, we're, we're going to take Lord of the Rings, but we're going to magicify it. Yeah, because that worked so well last time. But they got time to fix it. They got, I mean, it's 2023. They got time to, to tidy up the things that people didn't like about the last tie-in, okay? Uh, but they say, we also knew that the immense size, the iconic nature of the stories and the devotion fans have to Lord of the Rings meant that we couldn't do the set justice without creating a full product lineup. No, it was a standard set release it had commander decks instead of planeswalker decks and now you're just pretending like oh it's just conspiracy three basically guys it's its own thing sure it is i'm sure that was the plan all along uh-huh wink wink so they're like oh read this whole article where we're going to carefully explain how this fits into modern and historic and how it fits into modern and, and historic is that it's fully legal in modern and historic oh also did you notice that they said it's coming to mtg arena uh, guys i wonder if this was originally a standard set I wonder. I mean, you guys know that if they did a fully separate Conspiracy 3 or Battle Bond 2, that it would damn well show up in Arena, though. So, I mean, that's not the strongest evidence. Because they would just take they take any side product and cram it into Historic. Because they want it to be as big, high power, and distinct as possible from Standard. They, they want it to be the new modern slash commander, which is why they did Historic Brawl. So, any little side thing, every little jump start, whatever, they throw it in. So, it's like, okay... My issue with the amount of money or wild cards it takes to unlock, like, any of this crap. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. So, that's another direction they're going, by the way, which is, uh, oh, modern equals expensive. That That's just, that's what people have in their heads. It's what people at FNM tell them. You want to play standard? You know, 20 to 200 bucks for a good deck. You know, that's usually what, what the range is. 
Modern, a cheap good one back when I used to play was like 800. So if people are like, I want to play the bigger, more powerful format. Oh, it's going to cost me double the money. Okay, that just is what it is. It's digital. They don't have to do this. Like Nobody should tolerate that on Arena. Remember when they rolled out Historic and they said, uh, you're going to have to burn two wild cards to unlock every card? Yeah, that's what set the tone for, ooh, this is basically just modern and modern costs more. No, it's on Arena. It doesn't have to cost more. We're not going to buy your bullshit, wizards. But that's the direction we're going. So they're going to take this whole thing and crap it into arena for some reason and mtgo so this whole extravaganza is happening sometime in 2023 uh, i guess really all the information we got about midnight hunt is that the spoilers start in september and uh it's the werewolves are going to try and interrupt the harvest tide festival and the the village people is, i'm gonna keep calling them that try to fight them off with the power of upbeat 80s hits let me just tell you okay i'm i'm at most an above average human you know i can i can fight on how to use weapons you know more than just some rando off the street especially in seattle we do it a little different in wisconsin we do some weapon training here okay you f with my garden harvest you start f with my corn i will end you i don't care if you're a little tiny chipmunk or a, a fucking insect or a fucking werewolf okay i'm i am going to if you even touch my tomatoes, cucumbers, I don't care. I will throw a cucumber at you just as a warning, okay? I don't give a shit about my cucumbers this time. I got, I have an entire refrigerator of cucumbers right now. I don't know what to do with them. I can only eat so many per day, okay? Yesterday I had Taco Bell and cucumbers, and twice in this recording I went to blow up my bathroom so hard I might have to buy another one. Just, just get the wrecking ball. Get rid of my current bathroom, okay? It's, it's gone. It's, it's, it is a lost cause at this point. What was I talking about? What was this video about? Oh yeah, werewolves are gonna come try and steal their, their stuff at the harvest festival. My money's on the village people, okay? Us gardeners don't spend, like, you know, hours in the hot sun watering stuff and getting rid of pests and fertilizing and looking at leaves and trying to diagnose shit to have a werewolf come f*** up our harvest festival. So, yes, we got one additional sentence, maybe half a sentence, describing Midnight Hunt, and I have uh, extrapolated a little bit from it. Uh, then they gave us absolutely nothing we didn't already know about Crimson Vow. Just, it's a wedding, Okay. Oh, their big announcement with the double Innistrad set is that they're going to have a special double feature draft experience that combines them both. Wow, I didn't see that coming. They're meant to be released separately, so combining them into a draft, people are just going to draft one or the other, and it makes absolutely no sense because one set is going to be more powerful than the other. Just intrinsically, that's how it has to happen. So, uh, Also, just between them, call me crazy, but it's Innistrad. I, I think we're going to see an overpowered black color, so if you combine them both, everybody will just draft black. Speak of that, oh my gosh, I might have to stream how comical it is if you do black mix on the current uh, non-premier draft on arena because you just get drain away enchantments and just win drain away removal and lifelink and flying creatures and walls like you could uh, honestly just go mono black i think i did and i went like five wins three losses so that sounds like a great idea so as far as in-store play they just kind of said uh, some people can return to normal but we don't really know Honestly, without even really even saying that much. So they say, okay, we're planning a store championship in December. And, uh, okay, if you participate at all, you get a, a reward because Seattle. Um, and you get Arbor Elf promo. Oh, boy. It's like Elvish Mystic, but worse. If you get in the top eight, you get this promo collected company, which, hello, plus I'm on cut artwork. That's cool. Still think the card should be banned, but I appreciate money when I see money. And that's just a cool artwork. And then if you win, you get this promo worm coil engine. That's got to be worth some serious scratch. I'm not convinced it's worth more than Collected Company, but we'll see. They have been kind of cracking down on Tron lately, I'm just saying. Now get this, okay, I, there's, there's no way they're going to do this correctly. There is no way with Wizards printing errors and logistics that this is going to arrive the way they're describing it. But that said, I hope you're sitting down and not drinking anything, because pre be prepared to be shocked while also laughing. The Collected Company Worm Coil Engine, so the, the top eight promos and the, and the winning promo, will have the store name printed on them if you go to a WPN Premium store, which nobody does. It's like less than 5%. So when you go to sell it, you can dox yourself, so that's fun. That, that's always, that's a good time. And I'm sure they won't ship you one with it misprinted, blank, you know, double printed, three names on top of each other, or, you know, a, a completely different country's game store name. Just like I'm pretty sure they'll spell it correctly. And, and won't accidentally put on their official business name, like blah, 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 Cards Trading LLC, instead of the actual name of the store, the informal name. I don't know. Maybe they'll pull it off. I, I don't think so, but th that is wild. That's probably the most surprising thing out of this entire announcement article, is that they're going to attempt to put the store's name on these promos, but only at the premium stores. 
Also, we, we kind of already knew about this, but there's going to be something called a Commander Party because, you know, Commander is the number one most played format. Uh, th that's actually not true. It's if you don't count the open-ended, like, concept of a format of anything goes, just play whatever the hell you want. Because their estimations say that that outnumbers Commander at least 3 to 1, potentially 10 to 1. Not even kidding. Depends if you measure it by dollar amount, person, or, or number of games played, but, um... Yeah, that, that's the big one. But still, Commander is number two. So they're going to do a uh, Commander Party. Oh, yeah, we actually already knew that it was planned for October 30th and 31st. I remember making a bunch of Halloween references. So, uh, okay. But they're announcing that the second one will be December 4th through the 5th. So that's pretty cool. But, I mean, if there's even prizes on the line, like, everybody knows as soon as it's competitive and you don't, like, fully know the people as good friends, you're going to bring some abusive $10,000 trash that wins on turn two with an infinite combo and then just say, hand me the prizes, bye. And then people who uh, aren't used to that and weren't aware that that existed in Commander, which is probably the most mismanaged format in the entire game. And, and then remember, it's reined in because, you know, it's it's self-policed by your playgroup. So if you show up and you're like, what did you just do and is that even legal? I hate you, get out of here. It, it's it's not even going to be like, I want my money back. I didn't know this would be such a like shitlord format full of shitlord assholes. But it might even result in some fistfights. I know I wouldn't take it sitting down. So what I'm thinking is the last time they wanted something to be like forced casual, they mandated, and they don't usually do this, that the stores give away the promos randomly. So they're like, we have, you know, 40 of these. We have like eight of these. Give away the eight as a random drawing. Do not give it to the people who win. This is not about winning. They have done that a grand total of one time in the last nine years. So hopefully they bring that back because competitive commander is not even remotely vaguely fun in any way, shape or form and friendly commander. Well, it stops being friendly when you're playing for prizes. <laughs> and finally, the moment you've been waiting for, even though not even kidding, I got this about 60% correct based on leaks. The 2022 schedule for Magic Standard releases is first Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Look forward to me saying Neon Genesis about a million times. And then obviously referring to the actual set as Space Japan because this time it's actually true. It's like future cyberpunk. It's Oh, it's going to be controversial. Then we've got Streets of New Capenna. And you might be thinking, well, that's not Streets of New Celesta at all for which they already registered the domain name. But remember, uh, Ixalan originally started as um, Atlazan, and they changed it. So, you know, no surprise there. Same thing, though. Uh, to me, that looks kind of Art Deco 1920s to 50s U.S. architecture, just in the logo, which is a shame because uh, I thought either Mark Rosewater or, let's see, it wasn't Aaron. It was a uh, sweater vest guy. I forget, the, the, the cool one, the one who does the magic thing. That, <laughs> good Lord, the magic thing. The... Gavin, that's who it is. He does the magic thing on the YouTubes, you know? One of the two or both had said that we're going to see a Western set with cowboys. Okay, that don't look like no cowboys, okay? Cowboys don't do straight lines like that that look like chrome. Okay, that, that looks like, at best, 1950s diner, okay? But it really looks like old time in New York, which uh, I, I'm kind of into any of that. I mean, you know, hey, if we're going to, you know, freaking space Japan with, you know, ninja swords and who the hell knows what else, we might as well go to... 1920s New York. Then we've got Big Surprise Dominary United. I think I spoiled that about five times in the last month. Uh, then we got The Brothers War. Yeah, Urza's is coming back. Yay. Now, we already had The Brothers War. Like, I, I don't think that that was just in a book. I think that was like a whole set. Don't ask me which one. There was a whole bunch of Urza's sets. That's way before my time. But, like, are we just going to do The Brothers War again? Is it another Brothers War? One or both of them is dead, I think. So just, oh, throwback back in time thing? Or, like... Like, actual time travel? Or, like, are we just revisiting that storyline? I don't know. I, I think people would be kind of happy either way, and some people would be unhappy either way, no matter what. But, I don't know. Really hard to say. I should back up. Uh, Dominary United is going to be allegedly united against the Phyrexians. That's what everybody's saying, because, duh, that's the way we're going. I'd like to see them united against the Cabal. They are way too dangerous and need to be wiped out. Seriously. I'm only 75% sure that they're on Dominary, to be honest. I'm no lore expert. But to back up again, I think that New Capenna, the streets of New Capenna, the sound of that and knowing the original name and looking at the art, I'm kind of getting Bioshock vibes. So we might see some kind of thing like that. So after that blind speculation, I have not read this yet, they have little tiny descriptions. So Neon Dynasty, yep, it's... Exactly what it sounds like. A lot of neon lights. A lot of electricity. A lot of futuristic crap. Pretty sure that's an origami robot raccoon on his shoulder there. That's, uh, that's a thing. So first up, uh, a trip that was years in the making. The feudal past of Kamigawa sets the stage for the far-off future... 
we return to with, but that's a weird way of phrasing a sentence, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, filled with high-tech delight and homages to fan favorites, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty comes to stores in the first quarter of 2022. So it's the first set. That's what everybody was suspecting. I have more about the art and the storyline, but that's that's more leaks than spoilers, so I'm not actually going to like ruin it in this video. Okay, now we got Streets of New Capenna with... um. I don't know, some demon in armor? Yeah, that's that's every set. And then uh, some other demon in not armor. Yep, shirtless guys in tight-fitting jeans. That's that's also every set. So let's see what they tell us. Oh, and in the background, that is so 1920s New York. I totally spotted that. All right, they say, uh, trailing after our trip to Kamigawa like a detective with gumption. Oh, this is going to be New York. Uh, the following standard release takes us to the streets of New Capenna. Oh, yeah, streets. Okay, of course it's New York. Why did I think Bioshock? Uh, although, I mean, he's kind of dressed kind of Bioshocky a little bit. I mean, that is almost like, yeah, you know, kind of the, like a zoot suit almost, but like different. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Uh, so a city with special significance to Elspeth, built by angels, now run by three color demon crime families. Oh, uh, got another three color set. Never did like those. I mean, you guys know I like mono because it puts, you know, builds restrictions into the game and encourages people to have actual weaknesses in their deck instead of Swiss Army disasters, but okay. So a city built by Elspeth, and that's why they were going to call it Celesta, and then they went with Capenna, probably to sound more like Al Capone. I mean, people are like, oh, what a brave new idea. It, it's like so transparent what they copied. I mean, in Keldheim, didn't they name Loki like Lauki or something? And then they pretty much say vehicles are coming back. Oh, good, because we'll race through the streets of New Capenna. Gee, I wonder if it'll be early New York model cars in the second quarter of 2022. So then we got Dominaria United, and that artwork immediately just gives it away. Jodie Foster's going to be in there. She's going to get the, the plans, and she's going to be an astronaut. She's going to travel through space, and then people are going to say nothing happened, even though the camera recorded 18 hours of nothing. And a terrorist with white teeth and even whiter hair is going to like blow up the first one, but then they have a second one. And if you haven't seen Contact with Jodie Foster, y'all got to go watch that. But that's what we're looking at right there. That is literally the device from Contact. I mean, it's even activated. I mean, come on. Okay, we're, go we're going to space. All right. Came to see Jodie Foster Planeswalker. Anyway, I'm going to read this exactly as they wrote it. You know you're in for a treat when I say that. Dominaria holds a special place in magic across the lore of game and in the hearts of fans around the world. I know it's, it holds a special place in my heart in the lore of game. With so much story and decades of magic history packed into one plane, our next visit with Dominaria United... Remember, third quarter 2022 is the perfect place to kick off our 30th anniversary celebration. Um, excuse me, 30th anniversary in 2022? Really? Well, according to the Authority on Time Calculations, Dekid.com, there are 29 years between 1993 and 2022. Also, Masters 25 came out in March 2018. So, by no stretch of the imagination is 2022 the 30th anniversary of the game, but okay, we'll go with that. What are they actually thinking saying that? Like, you know what? Moving on. They don't tell us anything about the story except that Jodie Foster is going to be in it and it's going to have to do with space travel. <laughs> so then we've got The Brothers War. Okay, well, that looks like a bunch of Thran crap. Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably about right. I think the Thran did something with theirs. I don't know. Uh, that's way before my time. Uh, while Magic's history stretches back 30 years, no, it doesn't, the lore of Dominaria itself is much longer. What? Dominaria predates the invention of the game, you're saying? Okay, can you reference a, a book, a novel? Uh, a am I the asshole here? Am I just missing something? What lunatic wrote this? Like, seriously, can anybody explain to me how any of what they just said was true? Anyway, yeah, Dominaria's lore predates the invention of the game, apparently, <laughs> returning to a pivotal story of Dominaria's and Magic's history. Are they trying to say that more than 30 years occurred because it's it's been like 1800 years or something like that in the lore so like yeah that is more than 30 but why would you say that and then exactly reference there is, is were they making a joke is that let's read about the brothers war so <laughs> returning to the pivotal story of dominary magic's history what started as a feud between urza and mishra uh erupted into an all-out war that set into motion the future of the plane the multiverse itself and then somebody broke a bowl blew everything to hell and now they're both dead I'm not even sure that part of the lore is accurate. Uh, through the lens of Dominaria's locations, characters, and victims of the conflict, we'll see a plane-spanning conflict escalate with artifacts, giant mechs, and beyond in the Brothers Wars. We, we already had the Brothers War occur in the magic story. Like, that, there had to have been a set with it. Like, there's 
the, the Mishra people and there is a dudes that they built and like they're, they're they're on cards like we're just revisiting it like oh I wonder what'll happen hmm like they, if they really wanted to be savage they would actually make it end differently this time and have it like actually involve magic lore but then they would basically erase every other thing that happened on the every other plane like the return to dominary the gate watch all that all that would get erased because they would have the war end differently so I wouldn't recommend you do that wizards if you don't want to piss off literally every single person who knows any tiny iota of the lore. In fact, we would probably have a new planeswalker in the place of, of Teferi named Tiny Iota if they f*** with the timeline that badly. Oh, and they can make him really tall. Oh, they should do that anyway. Next up, just gonna drop this bomb on ya. I hope you're ready. New unset. It's called Unfinity. Oh, hell yes. There is nobody, nobody who doesn't like the unsets. And if they do, they're not a true fan of magic. I've seen some never smile, never have fun, douchey, net decking, absolute waste of space at FNM, but even they can agree that the unsets are kind of enjoyable and funny. I mean, I'm pretty dead inside after losing $110 million on Bitcoins, but when a card says get up and high five a bunch of people, I'm going to do it, okay? So it's going to be a quote space carnival. Um, why not? So it says, I mean, plus carnival games. I mean, like little mini games, little silly. Come on. I mean, like I'm, I'm already in. I'm, uh, can I pre-order this? it's magic it's in space <laughs> that has to be based on me calling everything space japan space india and like space earth i'm pretty sure i jokingly called at least the arabian night said space earth as like a meta joke but anyway uh it's retro futuristic fun Ooh, so it's like follow cool meets a space carnival and you must see to believe I've at least at one point called either Homelands or Arabian Nights Space Earth, ironically, but anyway. Uh, it's magic, it's in space, it's retro-futuristic fun, meets a space carnival, you must see to believe. Unfinity brings the joy and celebration of combining magic's mechanics with new characters, plenty of laughs, plus uh, beautiful science fiction-themed full art-basic lands, because, duh, it's an unset that's all the value that's going to be there, uh, in both draft and collector's booster packs. Oh, come on, now you went and ruined it. I'm canceling my pre-order. Uh, releasing in the second quarter of 2022. That's about two or three months before the Civil War after the next uh, congressional election in America, so that's good. Then if you're sick of the third-party tie-ins and didn't like the D&D &D set, I've got news for you. Dungeons & Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate Commander Legends. They picked previously used words out of a hat and came up with a set out of it. So, I mean, Commander Legends, it's, you know, the last one wasn't too bad. It's basically they're just injecting cards directly into Commander, but that's what literally every set does because it's an eternal format. So, okay, now Modern Horizons, that's a different story. That I don't really think they should play with fire with, but they keep doing it. So it's new Commander cards except in a full set with randomized boosters instead of just, oh, here, have four or five decks. Which, I mean, yeah, sure, I, I would actually prefer that. So they say the debut of uh, the D&D AFR set, so, you know, Forgotten Realms, the one we just saw, brought a mix of magic and D&D to life in amazing ways, with many more stories and characters from the Forgotten Realms to share. So focusing on the city of Baldur's Gate and building on the Commander first gameplay of the 2019 Commander Legends... Yeah, it's called Commander Legends. What do you mean Commander first? Oh, did you think something else would be true? What a weird way of saying that. Uh, our return to Commander Draft. Oh, that's right. That was a thing. I never did it, but it was a thing. Uh, with Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, uh, we bring iconic characters, new mechanics, more flavorful spells from D&D, plus Commander Legends style foil etched legendary creatures. Uh, probably an expansion of the dungeon mechanic. I'll just throw that in. Uh, all packed into an even greater social experience. Uh, be ready when the battle begins in the second quarter of 2022. Ooh. Oh, you're going to release that at the same time as the onset. That's not smart. That was not well planned. So more good news is not just Masters is back. Double Masters is back. Oh, yes. Everything fans loved about Double Masters, which let, let me just, okay, before they say what it is, it was a master set that didn't suck and you got two rares per, the, per pack for like a reasonably kind of low box price. Also box toppers. But they say everything fans loved about Double Masters, two foil cards and two rare mythic, okay, they're actually admitting it, mythic rare cards in each draft booster. Wait, was there a lawsuit about that and they like, it couldn't really contain two mythics, but then they accidentally printed some with two mythics to save their ass? That, what, what set was that? That was Double Masters, right? I feel like it was Jumpstart, but I don't know. There was all kinds of lawsuits about that, I heard, but I don't know if any of them materialized. But uh, anyway, it's back with Double Masters 2022. Oh boy, with more powerful reprints and a multicolored draft focus. Who drafts mono? Uh, all this and more arrives in the third quarter of 22. Okay, we all know I draft mono. Come on. Literally just did it last night. Mono black, five and three. Suck it. And then we've got Jumpstart 2022. I didn't think there was more toxic of a 
like connotation name or whatever than jumpstart the way they shipped it the way they designed it how unbalanced it was on arena the fact that they're calling the stupid historic anthology times 10 on steroids a jumpstart product for arena when it's really just a historic anthology they're reusing the name again Wow, there are certain things you just leave in the past. There was such a train wreck that you're like, let's do it a little bit different and rename it and hope people don't have the memories and put two and two together, okay? This time they're just like, balls out, jumpstart 2022, and I'm sure that the subtitle is deal with it. So, in addition to MTG Arena's Jumpstart Historic Horizons, released just around the corner, I'm terribly excited, but they say, we're excited to share that Tabletop gets a new twist on Jumpstart Action 2 with Jumpstart 2022. I'm sure they made that rhyme on purpose, arriving uh, to stores around the world in the fourth quarter of 2022. There you go. Christmas, that's actually smart. Uh, leaping to new heights, Jumpstart 2022 comes packed with a new booster fun booster and that's capital b capital f booster fun card treatment what the hell is that i know the term booster fun i've heard that before i but i don't remember what it is i do remember making fun of it but i don't remember what they referenced by it i remember it being a really odd like misnomer though does anybody remember what like booster fun was in reference to because like i said i know i've heard that term don't know what it means though in this context it sounds like a new showcase frame though which <laughs> who gives a shit but uh a new to magic card in every pack okay and then the rest are reprints, probably. Great. Uh, dozens of themes to mix and match for fun. No, you just take the most powerful ones and just win. Uh, with plenty of amazing reprints for every fan to enjoy. So it is a reprint, have you said? It always was, but they're going to throw in some new stuff because, you know, sell the commander players. And <sighs> Jumpstart was just so unbalanced. If they even fix the balancing issue, I think people still just don't like it as a product. I'll tell you why. It's a cheap ass format to play. You buy two packs, smash them together, play with your friends. Just like that. I mean, it's real simple, pretty cheap. You know, don't even have to bring a deck. So I kind of do like stuff like that, but I think high level players kind of consider it beneath them. But if you actually like play it, it's kind of fun. I except if people picked, you know, one of the three or four God tier ones and then they just stomped you in the nuts with it. Doing it blind, it was completely unfair. Doing it on arena, you just had to know to pick the one because they presented you with like two or three and you picked one. And then they presented you with two or three more and you picked one, I think, or something like that. So you can kind of steer yourself towards the ones that are really broken and unbalanced. And yeah, that, that was not a good time at all and then they started like rigging the matchmaking to try to like fix it and uh god they had the shipping issues i'm not sure jumpstart the first one ever even made it to europe like ever i i think they even announced we're just giving up oh well we're moving on and then they printed a second wave in america so like did that ever go to europe or like it, it was a disaster it was a complete and utter train wreck why are they bringing it back it's awful and everybody hates it and now we get the least popular one, Exploring Universes Beyond. Oh, here we go. They say earlier this year, we shared an early peek at some of the incredible, that's an opinion, magic. Wait, incredible magic in parentheses capitalized to come with Universes Beyond. I think you mean intellectual properties to come to magic with Universes Beyond, if you're going to use the capital M. But uh, we've established that a complete moron wrote this whole article. Okay, so today we blew the doors open with new details and exciting artwork. 2022 and beyond sets up. Uh, wait, wait, and wait, what? It's, well, now you got the beyond and it's lower. I am so confused. I'm just going to scroll past this train wreck. Right? Warhammer 40k. Cool. We already know about that one. Great. It is going to be uh, four commander decks so that even if you don't want to ruin your own magic themed commander deck in a magic product in a magic game while you're playing magic nothing stopping your friends from having you know jace summon a guy from warhammer 40k well it's a self-policed format but i would be shocked if these weren't legal in legacy and vintage so that, that'll spice that up not that i have any respect for those formats not that i even consider them magic the gathering it is a completely different game none of those cards were ever intended to go together and people went on turn one so i mean no thanks so I don't know shit about Warhammer. The most I know about Warhammer is that you guys keep saying that there's a Warhammer creator on YouTube that's a, a, apparently just like me and we need to do a, co a collab. So, sure. I think I even contacted him or joined his Discord or something and then that didn't go anywhere because he's never on his own Discord. Well, it's going to be a commander deck instead of Secret Lair. I know a lot of people are probably mad about that, but Secret Lairs are legal in Commander anyway. Then we got Lord of the Rings, Tale of Middle Earth. Okay, well, we already know about that. Okay. And, uh, okay, I, I, just, I just saw this and then had to pause the video to um, not blow up my bathroom a third time. This time I went to go get the holy water and pour it into my eyes, because Fortnite! Hope y'all got uh, holy water eye drops as well, because uh, I can't unsee that. I don't want Fortnite in my game. I don't want Fortnite players anywhere near my game. And if anybody starts doing a Fortnite dance 
in the middle of my game, I'm going to throw a bar stool at them. So let's move on to the way better Street Fighter. I guess I should back up and tell you what this bullshit actually is. Okay, Fortnite will feature two special secret lair drops consisting of reprints like you've never seen them before. Ugh, at least it's not new cards. Though you're on your own to practice your dance. If you do, I will actually commit like a class D felony. Like, I, you know, the meme Elmo going to have to commit a hate crime. Yeah. Yeah. Little kids in Fortnite are, are the worst thing ever. Like, And then they, they go together and it's just, it's a, it's a, uh, do not want. So Street Fighter celebrates its 35th anniversary, although whenever Wizard says anniversary, you might as well just not believe them just right off the bat. But anyway, <laughs> allegedly that's happening in 2022. Okay, sure. And uh, we're joining in the fun with the secret layer drop featuring its iconic characters in ways only magic can celebrate. Multi-kicker, <laughs> oh God, is the perfect mechanic for Chun-Li, right? I mean, if you want to just take outside stuff and then just shit all over magic's mechanics, but I mean... Okay, you can find these mechanically unique cards, oh no, in the upcoming Secret Lair Drop. Yay, I never played it and I don't care. Some of you are away into Street Fighter, some of you aren't. Uh, wasn't the last release really controversial? Was some micro ha transaction heavy rigged shit or something, and then people cheated at it and never really took off as an eSport because they didn't, you know, do anything to make it an eSport or respectable? Might have been Mortal Kombat. I, I don't know, they're all kind of run together. The, the last fighting game I played was Eternal Champions on the Sega Genesis. Not the Mega Drive, the Genesis, f*** you. Stupid Europeans calling everything the wrong name. So they want to remind you that these mechanically unique cards in a secret lair drop will be in the future releases and in-universe include as part of the list, but only in set boosters. Let me translate that, let, let me just paraphrase. F*** you, we're doing it anyway. So what's next for Arena? Well, it says this year's launch of MTG Arena on mobile opened the game to a bunch of disconnects, slow-playing assholes, and uh, douchebags, little kids, and just everything you didn't want in the Magic community. Oh, no, they actually, oh, pardon me, I misread that. It says a whole new audience. In 2022, we'll continue adding more experiences that fans enjoy. Wait, what, what do those two sentences have to do with each other? Whether that's practicing and polishing their tabletop standard decks or splitting mobile and desktop back into their own separate queues. Oh, sorry, I misread that again. It says some bullshit about discovering unique gameplay, digital, shut the hell up. If you haven't played Arena lately, it is miserable. It is clear as day when you're playing against a mobile user because they'll either disconnect or they'll take 300 years to do absolutely everything. So they finally announced if they're going to short the standard rotation or fix the fact that there are five sets legal this year. And the answer is no. Sorry for everyone that just threw their phone or their desktop or their laptop or their entire family across the room. The solution to overpowered standard and the solution to rotating out a bunch of broken overpowered shit and snow permanence and just all this trash, Strixhaven's all flying meta, all the stuff that we want gone to flush down the toilet after they've kind of rotated early this year just because there's five sets. Basically, if Midnight Hunt was, like, the only thing, it would be released, like, a little bit later. So, like, oh, we rotated, like, a month early. Like, okay, whatever. But their solution to that, and, and, the, the, and the reason that they made five sets legal this year is apparently not because we're rotating early next year. It clear as day says next standard, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 10 sets legal, okay? Eight sets was too many. Nine is extremely too many. Now it's going to be 10. Let me just be the first to tell you, Wizards, f*** you. We need a July rotation. You were 100% accurate in trying to do it the first time, and you shouldn't have listened to the whiner saying, then I want to play my overpriced thousand dollar net deck with my lands, and I want to play in six months longer. Um, one, f*** you, and two, you know damn well that you got to rebuild your deck every single time that there's a release, four times a year. You know that. Don't pretend like you can build a deck day one and run it all the way to the end. You cannot. That is bullshit. The lands, okay, cool, but then everybody loses access to them, and you were only complaining about that because fetch lands and other expensive lands they don't do expensive lands in the game anymore the most expensive land is like three dollars and fifty cents right now like at least a dually like a good one so the whole i don't want to just be able to play my deck for a year and a half i want to play it for two years or whatever they were complaining about um f you there's nothing else to say but f you you completely ruined everything for everybody for the last three years f you we would not be in the scenario that we are right now in standard constructed if we just stopped eight sets from being legal at simultaneously in the first place. How the actual tap dancing f they think that 10 sets is going to work is beyond me because it, it already doesn't. The standard 2022 queue right now, which is the pre-rotated only four sets legal format on Arena, 
is as high as the power level should ever be comfortably. And even then, I want about four cards banned, and so does everybody. I'm Delina, are you kidding me? The stupid treasure dragon, get rid of that bullshit. Westgate Regent, what the hell were they thinking there? Prosperous Innkeeper, that's a step too far with the life gain. Elvish Warmaster, that always was a mistake. Scoot Swarm, when the hell will Scoot Swarm be banned? But it's, it's tolerable. It's on the absolute verge. It's on the... It, it, it's the limit. It's as high as the, st the the abusive, broken, obnoxious card in power level should ever be, and now they're going to add six sets to it. The, the two Innistrad ones, Kamigawa, Kapena, or Kapena, whatever, Dominaria, and the Brothers of War. All that stacked on top of this. It's possible that they decided to reset the power level, and it, it, it is going to be, like, six shitty sets in a row. Like, as far like, you know, like, probably really good sets, appropriate sets, well-designed sets, but shitty as in, like, not very competitive, very, very weak, basic cards. And then we'll, we'll get back down to where standard used to be because they know that Throne of Eldraine was like the pinnacle of losing customers, to put it bluntly. My thinking is that they're actually lying. They know damn well that, that right around when New Capenna comes out, they're going to say, you know what, we got to rotate this early. They're just going to say, you know what, that's eight sets. We're pulling the trigger. We're cutting it off. Dominaria United's going to cut out uh, everything up to Midnight Hunt. And they just didn't want to pull the rug out from under us right now because the later they announce it, the better because people might like get really pissed now and just like totally check out of everything and not want to play standard and all this crap. But it was like 5% of the community complaining and they're still afraid of that 5% because they're a, a very entitled vocal group on Twitter that overrepresents their numbers. So I am livid over this apparent announcement that that standard rotation is going to be 10 sets legal it, it, it's just ridiculous so i'll just read what they wrote standard rotates soon and we'll see throne of eldraine theros beyond death that one's a shame ikoria yeah get rid of that and corset 2021 uh will be legal only in historic yeah, that, uh, that's not where i thought that sentence was going as we move to playing with sets from zendikar rising forward we'll celebrate a new year of standard for all players with a renewal egg filled with goodies yeah you get like 100 cards and a bunch of packs and whatever basically hey everything's rotating and going to shit historic's garbage please stay on arena please please oh my god we cannot lose any more customers please here have an egg i mean that's that's what that is log in once anytime before uh september 16th and you'll get it or something like that so uh you get a bunch of icrs and crap they're really really ramping it up because they they just really do not they, they cannot afford to lose more players that that's just what more is there to say so uh plus those sets that rotated out of standard will continue to shine thanks to the historic brawl queue so yeah they're adding commander to to you know the game but you're gonna have to burn mad wild cards to keep up with all the shit they're bringing like i'm sure jumpstart 2022 will be in there we already know jumpstart historic horizons will be in there i mean 99 plus one singleton you're gonna have to burn a lot of wild cards just saying. And as you open the jumpstart packs, you can get duplicates up to four, even though they're only legal in, well, historic constructed with four ofs, but really the one anybody gives a shit about, which is the singleton format. So you're going to sit there stacking up multiple copies of a card that you didn't even want one of in the first time while you're trying to just get one of the one you actually need, but you're out of wild cards. And I don't know if you checked, but like, I'm going to do a video on this in the near future, but like, like how many wild cards on average will a hundred dollars US cash get you? It is shockingly low. Mythic and rare, I, I, it's somewhere in like the 20s, I think. Like literally not even enough to build a deck. A hundred dollars won't even build you a deck. I feel sorry for anybody trying to jump into arena right now because you, you might as well just get out two, three, four hundred dollars to even build like two or three competitive standard decks. It's pretty f***ing bad. So they say if you want more competitive opportunities online, look forward to the upcoming arena opens. You know, duh, the $2,000 tournament, $1,000, $2,000 for, you know, what is it, seven or eight wins on day two, whatever they do. So those are cool. I mean, it's it, you're now a pro player if you qualify for day two. There you go. I mean, you didn't have to leave your house. You didn't have to worry about points or pro points or rigged matches or, the you know, wizards covering travel expenses for their favorite little buddy-buddy people that keep cheating and they sweep that under the rug. All that's gone. You sit on your ass, you're at home, and you qualify and win a $2,000 tournament. Done. Welcome to the new pro system. I love it. Not saying you can't cheat on Arena in various ways, allegedly. Just saying, in my opinion. Don't sue me. Uh, so beyond standard, historic, and sealed, we're also adding draft to the mix. Okay, something that will uh, delight players who already battle to mythic ranks with 40-card decks. So I think they mean like a $2,000 you know, Arena Open that's draft format. So that'll be kind of interesting. And then they reiterate... Jumpstart Historic Horizons again for some reason. Yeah, it's coming out in two days. It's awful. And it's the worst thing to happen to Historic ever uh, because it's just a giant 10x anthology. It's like 781 cards. So, uh, uh, wait, wouldn't that be... Is that 30x? Holy hell. It's No, it's higher. Oh, my God. Wait, okay. The normal anthologies were like 25 cards, weren't they? 
This one's 782. Or, you do the math. It's a tax on historic players. There, that's what it is. Let's just cut the shit and call it what it is. And finally, boy, this is a hell of an announcement. I'm glad they didn't drop Innistrad Midnight Hunt spoilers on top of it. Magic comes to Netflix. Okay, instead of reading what they wrote, I'm going to read what uh, Superhero Hype wrote. The Russo brothers leave Netflix's Magic the Gathering series. Joe and Anthony Russo are dealing out of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Nice. According to Deadline, oh, they're reporting on somebody else's article. Okay, whatever. Um, the brothers are vacating the roles as executive producers of Netflix's animated series based on the long-running trading card game. Now, why do you think would they jump ship instead of standing by it? Why have people historically done that to specifically Netflix series? Hmm, I wonder. Oh, and it's been delayed one to two years so far. I wonder if that's a good sign. Has that historically been a good sign? Did that work well with Black Widow? This is going to be an SJW shit fest with the worst writing and, and, and just it, it's, it is going to be astonishing. I am glad I canceled my Netflix subscription. That ain't going to stop me from going over to Eric's house and watching the whole thing. <laughs> Eric's house is not a euphemism for a torrent, by the way. I, I wouldn't do that with my VPN that I pay less for than Netflix. Um, honestly, the Eric just got a new cat. Her name is Scarlet. She's adorable, and she likes to attack D&D miniatures, and I love her. So I, I probably actually will watch it over there. But then the Russo brothers are already saying that, that they might get a spinoff that's live action? What? If you jump ship because it's a radioactive shitstorm that you don't even want your names associated with and you want to get out ahead of this, why the f would you say you might get a live action spinoff? Why would you even touch a live action spinoff? Let's read what Wizards wrote. Magic comes to Netflix in 2022 with its own series starring familiar, fresh, and reimagined. Oh, oh no! Oh, just kill me now. Reimagined characters. Okay, everybody's black, gay, and female all of a sudden. Wow, woohoo! Welcome to Netflix and Wizards of the Coast, where forced LGBT representation that doesn't mean shit replaces character development, apparently. What's their character type? Gay! That's their character type! Woo! What, you're offended and we, we pissed off everybody on both sides? Oh, shit. I am officially rating this before it even comes out. F*** this out of 10. I mean, the only people who might watch this are one, Twitter weirdo morons, and two, people who actually give a shit about the lore more than the gameplay so they're like "Ooh, magic the gathering thing that is in video form i'll watch it cool yay lore stories woohoo nobody who knows the lore and has been following it for like 20 plus years wants anything reimagined okay you bring garuk out as a proud black female and we're gonna have a big fucking problem and not because you know people are oh i don't want no black people and women in my movie like what do they think it's the fucking 50s no i want garuk to be garuk i want captain marvel to be captain marvel i want you know spider-man to be spider-man you know why because t decades of lore that i learned like are you kidding me? you're gonna reimagine it because let's cut the shit hollywood just hates white people and this character reimagining coming from a company that refuses to treat white people correctly according to glassdoor.com or hire any black people like back in reality where shit actually matters but in fantasy land oh well now chandra's gay apparently even though she's not and she's had a crush on large beefy men or whatever she said whatever the quote was it's cheap it's pandering it's insincere it's hypocritical and it's marketing it's nothing it is not representation it's not progress it's not changing culture it's not making lgbt people feel better it's bullshit it is 100 self-serving pat yourself on the back virtue signaling bullshit this whole series is going to be the worst catastrophe and it's going to be a black eye that tells people who don't know shit about magic the gathering to stay the f away because if this is their first introduction to it they're going to be like holy shit that's woke trash bye i'm never playing your game ever again somebody please tell me what that other one was called is it hearthstone is that is that a thing i'm gonna go play that one f it wait is ash ketchum still ash ketchum or wait have they have they made him into a trans non-binary multiracial okay yeah i'm gonna go play pokemon sincerely everybody on netflix although anybody with a spine has already canceled netflix because they're a bunch of crooked perverse pedophiles over there if you haven't yet you are honestly a terrible person and you're supporting a terrible company cancel that shit on a completely unrelated topic vpns are a wonderful thing and they're about half the price of netflix not that those two have anything to do with each other at all obviously okay i know you guys want my first impression because apparently they showed some like footage or a teaser or something but it's in the middle of a one hour video and this it's six o'clock i got shit to do today i still have to edit this nightmare so they say watch this to see the visual previews and even better hear from the voice of gideon himself brandon roth okay whatever i'll do that later it'll be a separate video uh they'll probably dmca it or copyright it anyway so um expanding on the events that on fold in the netflix series the prequel novel dives into how gideon and jace bond oh god 
And distance as they share causes. It was supposed to be about Chandra. That was 100% confirmed. So that's uh, interesting. Uh, but distinct perspectives and abilities. You know what they should do? They should make the whole series about Jace crying and talking about his feelings on the steps of Ixalan or whatever the hell that was. I would watch that. Okay, I would get all my girlfriends together and I would watch the shit out of that. I don't want to see big, beefy superhero men in the gate watch or women. I honestly don't give a shit. Um, go, you know, fight dragons and monsters and demons and cults and all that. I want to hear about Jace's feelings towards Gideon, damn it. If you're not familiar with how Netflix does things, I actually wasn't kidding. If you see a teaser trailer or hear coverage or whatever and then even show one frame of it in your video and then say something bad about it, boom, DMCA takedown. If you show the entire trailer in the front of your video but then say something positive about it, it stays up. How the f that selective enforcement is legal in America is beyond me, but it is unfortunately, so I'm not touching this actually. I'm going to continue to pretend it doesn't exist. So anyway, that's it for uh, today's announcements, I guess. Holy shit, that was a lot of stuff. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Leave a thumbs up if you think I had the best spicy coverage of this spicy day. And uh, honestly, if you made it this far in the video and you're not subscribing, what the actual hell is wrong with you? Like, you you just watched 60 minutes of me talking about this shit. Subscribe. You obviously want to see my other content or you hate yourself or you already fell asleep. In any case, hit the subscribe button. Wake your ass up and hit the subscribe button if it's red. Seriously. Or go subscribe to one of my channels I actually give a shit about. There's four more. Just click on my channel, click on the about tab. Uh, so thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you guys next time.